What do you consider yourself? Hispanic? Hispano? Chicano? Mexican-American? Latino? This is my favorite question because it garners no answer, just a smirk. For to know what I consider myself to be, you would need to know the people that I come from. Not only was I an only child growing up, I was also the eldest grandson on my mom's side of the family. This meant that on countless long weekends and spring breaks, I would go spend time with my grandparents. There was always an adventure awaiting me there. Whether it was piling in the car for a trip across the Southwest, or a walk to the food emporium to see the machines that made the tortillas. It was during these adventures that I would learn most about the world. I remember seeing different animals and crops as we traveled through the countryside on the back roads. We would stop and visit as many relatives as we could along the way. The point of our travels was the journey itself and not the destination. And though my cousins were fortunate enough to have similar experiences, I enjoyed quite a bit more than they did. My grandmother, being from a small town in South Texas called Mercedes, had quite a lot of family that still remained throughout Texas. We would often go on long road trips to Texas to visit family there, just the three of us. We would stop and eat in small towns along the way and stay overnight with relatives who would prepare food for us and take us sightseeing. Hospitality is very important in our family. It was usually late at night on these long road trips mesmerized by the flickering white stripes as we drove, that my grandparents would tell me stories. These stories were of times and places of the past, still vivid in their minds as if these stories occurred yesterday. My grandmother told me about her grandfather, Juan Avila, and how he and his brothers immigrated to the U.S. from Mexico. Grandpa Juan, along with his siblings, were on the run from the law. They were outlawed because they had allegedly been conspiring to overthrow the Mexican government. They fled and later sent for their families that they left behind two years after they settled in South Texas. The Avila brothers also owned a chain of grocery stores and did very well for themselves and their families during this time. She would reminisce about how holidays and customs that she was familiar with from her childhood in Mercedes differed from those that we were used to in northern New Mexico. Thanksgiving, for example, was a holiday where her entire family got together, roasted peanuts, and made mole. During New Year's, the men in her family would go out to shoot their guns, while the woman, women stayed behind to make bunuelos. Easter, just as we still do today in our family, was a time when the adults would hide cascarones, hollowed out eggshells that are filled with confetti and sealed. The kids would find them and crack them over each other's heads. As you can see, even though now we're adults, us nietos still carry on this fun tradition from a distant time and place. My grandfather, Antonio Romero, also told stories of his youth in northern New Mexico. Though he was born in Durango, Colorado, he spent most of his childhood here. His family was from Cuyamungue, and the Romero family tree can be traced back to Spain in 1528. He would tell me stories of his family, and often his mother, Margarita, who I remember fondly from my very early childhood. He also shared about his travels all over the world when he was in the military. I was very blessed that I was able to spend this quality time with these people, mis abuelos. They, along with other close friends and family members, have helped me to understand my true identity. It is the understanding that is important, not the label. They continue to inspire me to be a better person and to do so with integrity, respect, and humor. If you look through our family albums, you'll notice that for every perfect photo, of all of us looking at the camera with presentable smiles and our eyes open, there's at least a dozen more where we can't stop laughing long enough for us to stand still. Those are the truly perfect photos, for those are the photos that help answer the age-old question, what do you 
consider yourself.